All right. Okay. Good. Amen. All right. So I don't know, man. Something's crazy. So uh, it's been a rough week. Uh, so when I was working on the message, you know, I was like, okay, I have a bunch of parables that I got to share with you guys. We're gonna go through some parables. I don't know when we're gonna stop, but we're gonna just keep going through it. And uh, I was like, okay, Lord, which one, man? There's so many, right? And then this one pops up. And I'm like, yeah, that's not the one I like to talk about. Yeah, guess what? I'm not the boss, right? So uh, we're working on this, and I'm having a rough week dealing with a bunch of stuff. And as you guys can see, the unforgiving servant. Oh, that was me too, this week. Oh, I was really having it rough. All right. Uh, so I'm working on this. I'm getting bust up all over the place. You know, uh, we, we came here earlier uh, when they were doing worship and they were doing some stuff. And I sat there. They just sang one song. I'm falling apart. And I'm like, and, you know, I stand back here. A couple of them already goes, oh, no, he's up to something. You know, I, I'm like, Chad, wait. And she's like, oh, no, you know. Uh, but one of the things I think is so cool is that, you know, um, when the Lord prompts us, we have to move, okay? Even though it's uncomfortable. And so I'm waiting, and I'm, I'm, I'm the pastor guy. You think I would get this kind of under control, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I think it's me. I think it's me. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. My hands are folded. I'm like a little kid pouting, you know? Praying, praying, praying. And finally, I'm like, Okay, I have two choices. Suffer, right? Or release the, the pain and just let God be God. Suffer meaning battling God in my, 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 my brain. So yeah, I'll just let it go. So we went and did it. And I, I got to tell you, I, I believe that God is about to do some healing. Yeah, it's, it's really crazy. So... I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm basket case, you know. Jesus just makes me a big basket case. I cry about everything nowadays, you know. Uh, And it's not tears of joy, uh, sadness. It's tears of comfort and satisfaction in the Lord. That in the midst of my weakness, I serve a strong God. Uh, And these tears is that my God loves me. More than you. Nah, nah, he loves all of us. But that's that relationship that I am his apple of his eye. You know, so it it just overwhelms me with joy. So the title, like we said earlier, The Unforgiving Servant, Matthew 18, 21 to 35. As I mentioned last week, Jesus is the world's greatest storyteller. A third of Jesus' teaching is in parables. And these parables are like riddles, right? They have hidden secrets. They have what would be earthly um, stories with heavenly um, meaning. So in this parable today, we will find the wisdom and encouragement for living our daily lives with kingdom results. Okay, remember now, I shared this last week. uh, In the parables, you know, or any riddle, riddle to figure it out. You got to get the key idea. You got to kind of know, right? So uh, I, I want us to always do this with the Word of God, okay? Always listen for the key. Because there's something about the Lord that is so amazing. And the amazing is He hides nothing from us. But He does cause us to have a heart that says, I want to learn. I was trying to think of a way to describe this, and I don't like to mix the Hawaiian stuff and church stuff, okay? But uh, I want to share this, okay? Uh, Although I'm this size, before I used to dance hula, you know, skinny, you know? uh, And before we could go into the class, we had to say a chant. The chant wasn't worshiping anything. The chant was saying to the teacher, I'm here and I'm ready to listen. I'm ready to be taught. And you cannot move until the, pa- uh, the teacher, oh, see the kumu preach it up, preaches. 
<laughs> yeah, we should preach it. Uh, we would uh, chat back to you or acknowledge your heart to learn. When he or she chats back to you, he welcomes or he or she welcomes you in and says, now it's time to learn. I want you to take that same concept when it comes to the Word of God. When we get ready to get into the Word of God, we call out to Him. He says, hey, instead of teacher, we go, Dad, I'm here. And I'm ready to receive what you have for me. And then we let Him speak to us. You will know. You're just going to have this peace in your heart that says it's time to learn. I'm pretty sure you guys all know what I'm talking about. And so, that's, I, I, I want to say this, okay? That's the key into falling in love and understanding the heart of our Father. And I pray that we never stop doing that. We never stop having that type of mindset and attitude. I'm going to open up with a story that I thought was really cool. I think we all can relate to this. And I may have used it before. I'm not sure. It sounds so familiar, but let's see. Okay. One afternoon, a mother ran into the room when she heard her seven-year-old son scream. She found his two-year-old sister pulling his hair. She gently released the little girl's grip and said with loving words and kindness to the boy, there, there, she didn't mean it. She doesn't know that it hurts. He nodded in acknowledgement and she left the room. As she started down the hall, the little girl screamed. <laughs> Rushing back, she asked, what happened? The little boy replied, she knows now. <laughs> I started cracking up, right? Because how many of us act like this, right? In fact, I want to share something. I don't know if it's like, you know, it's just us guys or locals, but I remember uh, growing up, if we had the kids all hanging around and they didn't bite one kid, just what the other parent, the parent did, go bite that kid back. The same kid didn't bite you, go bite them. And then it's like, you know, what is the logic in that? Because then now they don't know bite you. We grow up already with the mindset, we need to get even. Right? You hurt me, I hurt you. You make me feel pain, I make you feel pain. So then you don't do that. But we, we, we don't realize the damage that it does and the mindset. Because we adopt this attitude that we got to pay back wrong for wrong. Now, as we get into the story, I want us to start checking our hearts, evaluating our hearts along the way because we have been misled, not purposely, not intentionally, but there was some teaching that was not biblical teaching, okay? I've learned this, and I think you will agree, too often when someone does us wrong, we will forgive them only after they pay. How many of you guys, raise your hands, yeah? But, you know, we, we, we don't want to do that because we kind of, or we won't admit it because it's not the Christian thing, yeah? But, when we're in our quiet place, that's, that's how we feel, All right? I'm going through a whole situation that's now, you know, I'm, I'm just like battling with this forgiveness stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, I can forgive, but you know, some payment, and oh, I love this story, I was like, some payment is better than no payment. And then this unforgiving servant's heart start popping out and start screaming, Junior, Junior, I'm like, shut up, shut up, right? So we'll, we'll dig into this and, and we'll see how this works. So remember, the heart of the Lord's message to us to always evaluate our hearts and keep our hearts 
in a safe place. We talked about it last week, right? Guard our hearts with all uh, urgency. Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often shall I forgive someone who sinned against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Wow, you know, I already like Peter, right? Because he's being a smart, smart guy right now. Right? You know, you guys know these kind of people, the ones that like, Oh, let me, let me put a Christian card and show you how much I love Jesus. I say this because we have to take this in context and we have to understand what was going on. Peter grew up in a time where the rabbi's teaching, the Jewish rabbi's teaching was three times was sufficient. Anytime after three, cut their line. But you're hanging out with Jesus. You got to give them Jesus' answer. Right? Or question, right? You got to... Do something that would like Jesus is gonna look, ah, that's my boy. How many of you guys ever did that? You guys just did a Jesus thing because he was watching. Yeah? Oh yeah, chuck one up for Jesus. Me, yeah? And Jesus said, you erase that because I already knew your heart, you stinker. Right? So I'm 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 already starting on this and I'm like getting all crazy, right? I was talking with mini church about uh, the never ending story you, you know when you get into the book I'm like yes you know I'm like really into it you know um, and so I love it because I love this because I mentioned it last week you know a lot of times even us want to play some tricky questions on Jesus anybody ever found themselves playing a tricky question on Jesus anybody Oh Lord, you know, and you know the answer, but you just try to see if you can manipulate it a little bit so the odds fall in your area. But what did we talk about last week? Give Jesus a tricky question? He's going to give you a tricky story. We're about to get one today, right? So Jesus, before we start the story, kind of stimulates Sir Peter's brain, right? And he goes, you know, not seven times, but 70 times seven. I can just see his jaw drop because he, he thought he was pretty smart with seven times. Now it's 70 times 70. The heart wasn't to go at 140, what, 144,000. Uh, it was to, what? Stop counting. It was to not be accounted for, right? That was such a big number that you say, oh, maybe count already. But how many of us we we, we count? Yeah, we count. We count the wrongs that's done by everybody to us, even people that deserve to be counted as wrong against us. You know, your enemies. You guys get enemies. Anybody get enemies? You guys, yeah. Yeah. But then, what does the Bible say? Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Oh, so we try to do a little tricky thing with the Lord. And he turns around and gives us a tricky answer. Right? So he gives this answer. He goes, you know what? The heart is one that, uh, the answer to your question is one you least expected. And it means it's that any heart that is repentive, okay, now this is the part. If the heart is sorry, then you gotta let them go. You gotta let, release it. But how many of us say, oh, they said they're sorry, but just in case, I just gotta keep some notes that on this day, you did this and you said sorry. So, so in case you act up again, I can't remind you about the sorry. But then again, how often do we do that to God? And the last time I read, the Lord says, if you would come to me and for ask for forgiveness, I will remove that, that sin as far as the east is from the, the west. Illustrating this part right here, which is not to be counted against you. So with that said, I, I want you to just think for a moment what standards of forgiveness 
do you follow? What kind of standards of forgiveness do you have? Okay, uh, do you refuse to forgive at all? Sometimes I can get like that. Why forgive? Because you keep doing me wrong. Okay, what about do you forgive according to what you think is reasonable? Well, I think I can excuse that one as if you anything great. Right, like the world around you, like you, the bomb. You know, the last time I read scripture, we, we're going to be back to dust, which is actually nothing. Right? But we kind of get this idea that we everything. Or are we following the command to forgive lavishly and unselfishly? You know, I'm going to be real honest as a pastor guy. I hate those kind of words. Because it, it's the part that makes being a Christian really hard. Largely, I mean, it suggests pour it out. Like, just, ooh, pile. You know, just forgive you as many times with a heart that doesn't even count. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, I so need Jesus. You know, and I read stuff like this. And, and, and I'm like, oh, Lord, I need a lot of work. But because I love the Lord, I, I, I thrive and strive to be where he wants me to be. Does that make sense? I am so grateful that my salvation is not based on my perfection, but my love. And the crazy thing is my love for God is so strong for like any one of us here that it causes us to to strive for perfection does that make sense no the big idea is people who have experienced god's grace in their lives will walk in love and forgiveness towards all others so we all have experienced God's grace and mercy, right? Because of Jesus Christ and we accepting Jesus Christ, we are bound for heaven. All our sins, all our wrong against God has been washed away. Everything wiped out. We owe nothing. We are in this right relationship with the Lord. But too often, we kind of lose that heart of understanding that if God can be so graceful and merciful over us, that we need to continue to show that same type of love outside. But it's hard because we, we humans and we battle with that and this is why we got to keep putting ourselves back into the presence of god allowing god to you know speak to our heart and check our hearts so now let's read some, some the story <coughs> excuse me matthew 18 23 to 27 therefore the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed uh, money from him. In the process, one of his um, debtors was bought, to, bought and who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay, so his master ordered that he would be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, please be patient with me and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him and he released him and forgave his debt. Now, if you look inside of the, your translation, I'm doing the NLT, you have the, you know, different translations and you'll hear talents and denarius and stuff like this, but kind of put this into a bigger picture of understanding. Uh, this man pretty much owed the king 
about a billion dollars. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can add that in your head. I'm like, show me a thousand dollars, you know what I mean? Uh, but this guy is like in huge debt. And uh, in those days, if you owed somebody money and they came to collect and you couldn't pay, they had the right to sell you, your wife, your children into slavery and sell all your possessions to make up the money. I mean, talk about ruthless, right? Lonnie here, I'm gonna make trouble. So Lonnie owe me a thousand dollars. She no can't pay him. Well, you know what? I'm, she gonna, I'm gonna sell her. Yeah. Even though I would only get a small amount. She owed me a million dollars. She only gonna be worth thousand dollars. Slaves was an expense. It wasn't even a big cost. But at least I had I, I get thousand dollars. Whereas if I don't collect, I'm not getting nothing. Right? And so this is the mindset. But at the king's command, when he says sell him, his family, and everything, so that I can get some of my money back, the guy drops to the ground and pleads for mercy, right? Be patient with me, I will pay it all off. Now, come on, a billion dollars. Yeah, I, you know, I know, I gotta believe this. The king knew he had no way to pay it all off, but the king was, he, 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 he saw the man down on the ground begging and he had compassion. Compassion. He was moved by compassion for this guy's pain, his suffering, his agony, right? And so when the king saw this, the king's heart was moved and the king released him from the death. You see, the king reveals the heart of God for us. Okay, so we've talked about getting the key. We've got to look at the king. The king is speaking of God himself. And so we look at this and the king reveals God's heart for us. He, we have sinned. We owe God with our life. Our penalty for our sin against him is prison. Eternal prison. But he says, no. I forgive that debt. I'll set you free from that judgment. Right? A debt that we could not pay, he was willing to pay. If we confess our sins to him, his love for us releases us and forgives us and allows us to live in freedom. It's crazy. Right? He does for us what we could never do for ourselves. The Bible tells us that our righteousness is like filthy rags. There is nothing any one of us can do to get ourselves into heaven. I don't care how nice you are. I don't care who you're going to be the sweetest person. You're so gentle. You do not have an ounce of righteousness that matches up to the righteousness that God is seeking that allows us to enter into his kingdom. We need the covering of Jesus Christ. And this amazing act of grace, right, when you think about it, is, is what should cause us or fill us with this gratitude and grace towards other people. I want us to remember this, okay? Because we're gonna talk about it in a little bit. We cannot be foolish to think that we are gonna be filled like this all the time. Because we deal with the world. We deal with people. We talked about this. You know, people will talk about the church. It goes, oh, the church get hypocrites, yeah? And you get hypocrites outside too. 
The problem about the church is that we should be doing a better job at making sure that we represent Jesus instead of the world, but too often we represent the world better than we do Jesus in Jesus' house. And that's the, that's the problem. We've got to fix that. Right? And, and we do that by remembering that if God can forgive me for all my ugliness, then I got to be forgiving towards other people's ugliness. But hard, yeah? And I'll, I'll just say it. When the ugly is a jerk, when the ugly is threatening you, when the ugly causes pain in your life, your heart starts to change. Right? And so there's a part of your heart, as we talked last week, that, that is good soil and then there's that other part where God is trying to shape and mold but it's gotten hard because of all the stuff that's going on Matthew 18 28 to 30 but when the man left the king he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars he grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment his fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his debtor, a creditor, wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. In the kingdom of God, God is the key. Right? And we are his servant. The forgiving servant old. So we have this mindset, okay? So now we're going to kind of change the story. We're going to put picture faces or whatever you want to call. We have been forgiven the billion dollars, all of us. But then somebody owe you a thousand dollars. Okay, you pleaded for mercy. The Lord gave you mercy. Salvation is yours. Now, you are forgiven. You set free. And now you go and check out the people that owe you. And you're telling them, now pay me or else. I really love the way the story is written because he doesn't just go to the guy that owes him money and goes, hey, he grabs the guy by the throat. He lays his hand, he abuses the guy and, and, and threatens the guy and says, pay me. The guy does the same thing he did. Forgive me. Give me time. The debt was not even close to what he owed, but he would not. Now, check this out, okay? Verses 31 through 35. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told the king everything that had happened. Then the king called, him, called in the man he had forgiven and said, you evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on the fellow ser your, your fellow servant? Just as I had mercy on you. Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brother and sister from your heart. Right there, gang, we should kind of sit up with attention because Jesus is giving us a very serious, serious warning, right? Those of us who refuse to forgive, the king would refuse to forgive. Like I said earlier, I, I, I'll be the first to say that I know what it's like to be hurt by somebody, right? Uh, I know how hard it is to forgive that hurt. And 
trying to release that and trying to get the concept of what God wants me to do in the midst of all the confusion and the pain. It's really hard. The reason why it's hard is because I've had the wrong teaching about forgiveness. And my brain, I can forgive you. I can let it go. But you have to pay something. You have to. Right? You guys know the thing, right? You draw blood, I draw blood. You bite me, I bite you. That's just kind of how we was brought up. But now as a Christian, the Lord is changing this. And, and it's hard. That the, the Lord is changing this teaching and this mindset so that our hearts would be one like His and that we would be a reflection of His Son. Remember, it says that scripture, in Scripture that God is creating us to be the likeness of His Son. We will not be like Jesus. If you're trying to be like Jesus, stop trying because you're going to fail. But what you can do to reflect the likeness of Jesus is to have a heart that's in love with God like the heart that Jesus had for the Father. In that, uh, in that place of uh, that heart, you will find yourself falling before the Lord constantly. Lord, I don't understand. Lord, I've been hurt. Lord, when do I get justice? Lord, 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 Lord. Uh, the Lord, I get one list of Lords all the way down to Waianae High School. And you know what? Sometimes, I'm going to share this with you. Sometimes I feel like the Lord answers me. Other times, I feel like the Lord just looks at me and says, you're asking me for an answer that you already know. What is the answer that I already know? I have to let Jesus have it. I will take steps. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But once all this has been done, I need to turn it over. But how many of us say, we forgive you, we turn it over, but we didn't. We're keeping a little bit. We're holding on to a little bit because we still feel we didn't get justified. But I want to share this. I'll share it at the end. I'll share it again. Forgiveness is an important principle in Scripture. We have seen and read the story, right, over and over, of how Jesus was beaten to the point where he was considered to not be recognizable as a man. Tortured, spat on, mistreated, only because he loved God. And he would not fight the world's way, but he would love God's way, a world that rejected him. That even on the cross, he would say to the Father, forgive them. They don't understand what they're doing. You know, I, I, I really was stuck on that scripture for a long time in my walk. I go, I know they're not dumb. But you know, they don't know the truth of God. Or sometimes some of them, just, they're afraid. They don't want to know. But when the Lord says, forgive them, it was so cool because he was saying, Dad, don't hold this against them. The purpose you sent me was to redeem them unto you. And for those who have come during this time that I am going through this, right on. But there will be some more. 
that's going to follow after. Forgive them and don't hold it against them. That when that time comes, they will come into the kingdom of God. You know, I was thinking about this and I just started falling apart. Because that is the heart of forgiveness. To hold no account to them. Right? No account. That one day, as scripture says, the kindness of the Lord would lead them into repentance. I got to tell you right now, I want to scooby-doo you right now. It's just so crazy. I'm shaking on the inside. Because I know that this is difficult. If you're living it, it is difficult. But Jesus said, if I overcame it, if I could deal with it, you can too. And let me share with you the key. And he shared the key. Right? that we have to get into debt with the Father. When I said, not debt, debt, you know, deep, okay? Forgiveness. Let me share with you what forgiveness is. In. Okay, forgiveness doesn't mean that what was done wrong, uh, well, how is it? Forgiveness doesn't mean the wrong that was done to you was okay. That's not forgiveness. Oh, forgiveness means, okay, yeah, I deserve it. No. Wrong is wrong. But you know what? I forgive you that wrong, and you will ha answer to God for that wrong. But I will not allow your wrong to dictate and control my life and determine how I move in the life that God has called me to live. This is what unforgiveness does. It causes us to, to, to be isolated. It causes us to be hindered. It causes us to move according to the person who did wrong to you instead of God who is doing right for you. Does that make sense? Okay. Forgiveness doesn't mean that the hurt that you pretend that the hurt didn't hurt. Right? Forgiveness doesn't mean, okay, yeah, that, not, that never hurt. No, that's stupid. I still fall apart. I mean, I, I, I can be seen now. Just stupid. I'm watching a stupid movie yesterday, right? And it's so cute. It's like, oh, I was just like, like oh, it's so cute. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, whatever. And then next thing you know, I'm sobbing. Right? I'm like, oh, my Jesus, what the heck? <laughs> but here's the thing, gang. Forgiving doesn't mean that the hurt wasn't real or the hurt doesn't hurt anymore. It's still going to be there. This is where we let Jesus come in. You know, after that moment and I realized that like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of more sensitive in that area than I thought I was, <laughs> right? And, and I had to do something really crazy. I, I, I went on my knees and I said, Lord, you need to take this, you need to take this brokenness. And I don't know how many more times I'm going to go to my knees, Lord. But every time I feel this, I'm going to give it to you and you take care of it. But I thank you, Lord. Okay, this is me. <laughs> I thank you that you acknowledge my hurt. Now, would you heal me? You see, forgiveness simply means that you are settling accounts and that you're releasing them or that person from any debt owed to you. 
I'm like sobbing at this stupid movie. It was just one little scene. It wasn't even one crybaby scene, you know? In fact, I can't be real honest. Was, you know, I was like one girl movie, you know? And I'm like, who got that side watching Kill Kill Kill? I watch this love movie. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? And I'm uh, like, being weak over here. Uh, but I realized this, yeah? I'm just watching that. <laughs> is that releasing any that old that means whatever pain whatever wrong whatever it may be you know what we we're even now you own your own but i gotta own this i gotta own me and god right now You are saying simply this. You owe me nothing for the wrong. It is so not the world's mindset, I'm telling you. You know, I'm praying this and I'm like, oh yeah, but you know, Lord, what about just a little bit? You know what I mean? Junior still creeps in every now and then, you know? Oh, okay, just take it like 70%, you know, not a 30%, you like, oh yeah. But I gotta be stupid, God knows that I'm stupid, you know, and so, by the time I, at the end of our conversation, I say, okay, Lord, all that is settled, you know, because then he kept telling me, did I give you 70%? Did I give you 100%? You know, but, you know, I gotta try, right? So, what about the hurt? How do we handle the hurt? Well, it's kind of crazy because if we jump up back to like verses 15 and 17, it says this. If any believer sins against you, go and privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. If the person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. And if, the, and if he or she won't accept the church's decision, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. So, you know, we read this, you know, I was like, oh, you kind of, I don't know about you, but I, I see a loophole right here. You know, I'm like, hey, Junior, you're pretty smart, you know. Uh, but let me tell you what this is saying. First, talk to God. Yeah, talk about this thing to God, the issue you're having. You talk to God as you go into prayer. Right? Pray that God will heal your brokenness. That's the first thing. Because sometimes you don't need to confront people. Sometimes it's just, Lord, fix me and it's okay. Right? And so, first step is, Lord, check my heart. Am I the one that's overreacting? Because we can overreact. Right? Because we all feel that we should, you know, have justice and we all right and everybody wrong, you know. Second, if you feel you need to talk to that person about it, then let your goal when you talk be reconciliation. Not, okay, I can't afford to talk to you so I can point out your wrongs. You know what I mean? And your neck wobbling like this, you know what I mean? No. The heart behind talking to the person is reconciliation. Let's, let's fix this. Hey, I'm sorry. Can we just move on? Yeah. Third is be careful that you're not talking to everybody. Right? You, it's good to have safe people. I, I believe two to three safe people is so cool. You just tell them, you vent, you let them. They're the lightning rod for your brain, your emotions, your spirit for you. That you can go blah, 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 and then they're going to shoot them right down to the ground. Stay away from the antenna Christians, okay? These guys send the airwaves out, man. They, they don't want that. Yeah? You find the ones that can listen and allow you because sometimes you just gotta get it out of your mouth and talking to yourself or by yourself don't work okay i do that all the time i need somebody that can absorb 
my my and they look at you like oh you're pretty nice yeah i'm not you know what i mean you know but if you do them all by yourself you know like they say you know you're 22 in game i you start having fun you know it's not 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 the same <laughs> you know uh so get somebody who can just you can just vomit on and they, they that you trust is just going to go into prayer for you and with you i want to remind you that any time we go around and we're trying to share our story with everybody thinking we're doing the Christian thing, it's called gossip. Everybody, you know, gotta know everybody's business. Right? And, uh, and then please don't even show that, oh, you know, we, we want to pray. Save that for Oprah because I really don't care. You want to pray? then you allow God to lead you into prayer for stuff you don't know. But you don't need to know everything. I don't know everything. You know? And I like it like that sometimes. Because then everybody, you know, is like bother you. You know, like, oh, you know this? No, 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 no. Go into prayer. Go pray about it, you know. Go to your safe person. Oh, you're the pastor. Go to your safe person. It'll get worse, you know what I mean? Then we can talk about it. But a lot of times it's just, you just got to get the right people to listen to you and then to allow you to just vomit and then he goes okay you good yeah that's all you know but when we like we want justice we don't want to deal with forgiveness we don't want reconciliation we want justice and so we're going to tell 20 other people because somebody going to be on my team well we only have one team here and it's called the jesus team and we either for him or not for him. Real simple. I want to share this last story as we get ready to tie up everything. I think it's really cool because we can talk about the bondage that we can have in our lives due to unforgiveness. A little boy visiting his grandparents was given his first slingshot. He practiced in the woods but he could never hit his target. One day, as he, as he came back to Grandma's uh, backyard, he saw her duck. And on an impulse, he took out his slingshot, aimed it, and released it. The stone hit its mark, and the duck fell dead. The boy panicked. Right? Desperately, he hid the duck, uh, the dead duck in a pile of woods, only to look up and see his sister watching. Sally seen it all, but she said nothing. What a good sister. <laughs> After lunch that day, Grandma said, Sally, let's wash the dishes. But Sally said, Johnny told me he wanted to help wash the dishes today. <laughs> Didn't you, Johnny? And she whispered to him, Remember the duck? <laughs> so Johnny did the dishes. Later, Grandpa asked if the children wanted to go fishing. Grandma said, I'm sorry, but I need Sally to help me make supper. Sally smiled and said, That's all taken care of. Johnny wants to do it. Again, she whispered, Remember the duck? Johnny stayed while Sally went fishing. Several days of doing both his chores and Sally's chores, he finally couldn't stand it anymore. He confessed to Grandma that he had killed the duck. Grandma replied, I know, Johnny. She said, giving him a hug. I was standing at the window and saw the whole thing. Because I love you, I forgave you. I wondered how long you would let Sally make a slave of you. Man, I read this and I was like, oh my gosh. How many of us are enslaved because of this? Because of the same lie that the devil put into our lives. Matthew 6, 14 and 15 says, If you, forget, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sin. You see, 
as I said earlier, forgiveness is an important principle in the kingdom of God. If we choose, oh, if we, how would I say this? So as we close this, e this, uh, this morning, uh, never forget this about forgiveness. It's God's way to keep our hearts filled with heaven's view. It's not about the other person. It really isn't. It's about positioning you in a place where your eyes are focused on the prize, on the big deal. The big deal is God, right? The big deal is all that God has for us. You know, one day, all the wrongs that have been done to you, all the hurts, that they have done to you, they will answer. There's a part of scripture that I, I'm so in love with because it, it comforts me to, to know that my God is so personal. And, 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 and you, you find different areas, you know, like he knows the amount, uh, exact amount of hair that's on our head. But this one verse, you know, just, just gets me and get me all nuts. Every tear I ever drop, my father has kept. Every tear. He has kept it. And the purpose of this scripture is to reveal to us there is not one thing that passes your life that God doesn't know about. He loves you that much. And one day, when we stand before Him, all accounts will be accounted for. They will answer to Him. And I'm sitting on there, to, you know, uh, yesterday I'm sitting on by myself and I just fell apart. One day, all accounts will be settled by the Father. Right now, I'll, I'll just let Him be God. And I'll just continue to love Him the best I can. Isn't it really cool? I want to get ready to call a worship team up. So while he was, uh, they were doing this song. Uh, you know, I just fell apart in the front. And I'm gonna, we're, we're gonna do it today. We, I, it's not something that was planned. Uh, but as the worship team come up, uh, they're gonna sing a song. And then they, I want you guys to just soak it in, okay? Grab on to the words, grab on to that. Whatever pain you have, whatever hurt that was done to you, okay, I want you to allow God to grab that brokenness, okay? And, and, and then I'm going to come up and then we'll do a little bit something after that. But the purpose of this is, I think, you know, when, we, when the song is playing, that the Lord says, there's a bunch of my people that need healing that they just need a special touch today from me. And he wants to do it. He wants to give us that, okay? So I'll be back in a little bit, but right now when they get into worship, gang, just let God have his way. So as we get ready to just surrender right now, uh, this is what the Lord put on my heart. You know, we talked earlier about how we are calling out to the Father. And then we wait for the Father to call us and say, come on in. I want to 
I want you to do something today if this is you. And even for people who are watching out, uh, you know, in the media, you can do this in, in your car, in your living room, wherever you are. And anyone here, if you have been broken, your heart has been tarnished, you're, you, you're just struggling with forgiveness. There's that part of you just, just let it go, but then there's that other part that's just still hanging on. You know, whether it's relationship, uh, marriage, uh, you know, parenting, co-workers, friendship, I mean, whatever it is, if you have been hurt and, and you're struggling with forgiveness, I want you to do something that's, you know, really bold. And I want you to stand up, okay? And your standing up is like the altar call. It's saying that, Lord, I'm coming to you. And I want you to heal me. I want you to bro uh, fix my brokenness. I cannot do this anymore. I want to walk in completeness of all that you have for me. And it's up to you. It's going to be your choice. But I believe this, that it is going to be a hard journey. Okay, again, it's going to be a hard journey to continue to move forward in this love relationship with God if we don't allow Him to fix the part that's been broken. The hurt is real. The pain is real. The offense is real. But it's time to let God have his way and allow him to bring healing into your life and I'll, um and i'm gonna step down they're gonna start praying but i'm, I'm gonna be the first to say uh, to you all that i'm gonna be standing because i need all of it I need him to fix what's been broken. But it's up to you. I just want to put it out there. I think it's so important for us to be real so that God can fix us the right way. Amen.